our counter component is broken because one, React doesn't know when to update the screen and two, React doesn't remember our count between renders. Let's fix that now with the use state hook. Back in the counter component, first we need to import use state. It is a named export from React. So at the top, import use state within curly braces from React. Now the question is, how do we use it in our component? Well, hooks are just functions whose names start with use. So we simply call them. Within the counter component, use state with parentheses. This use state function accepts an argument, which is the initial value of our state. And it returns two things, the current value of the state and a function that can update that state. For our counter component, we start counting from zero. So we'll call use state with zero. As for the return values, we will name the current value of the state variable count and a function that can update it set count. We will add the const keyword and wrap the values in square brackets. This syntax is called array destructuring. It is basically a way to unpack values from an array. Use state always returns an array with two items and we are giving each item a name. Now about these names, I chose count and set count because they make sense when you read the code. But you can name them anything. They could even be number and set number. But the convention is, if your state is called count, the setter function should be called set count. If it's message, then set message. Always set followed by your state name with a capital first letter. All right, so now we have our state variable initialized to zero and a method capable of changing it. Let's use them in our component. Remove the line, let count is equal to zero. So we can now bind the count state variable directly in the JSX. And in the handle click function, replace count is equal to count plus one with set count passing in count plus one. We are setting the count value to the current count value plus one. As for the lock statements, delete the lock statement within handle click to avoid confusion because we do have an upcoming lesson just about that lock statement. And as for the outer lock statement, let's also log the count value. Counter component rendered with count and then the count value. Perfect. Save this file, go back to the browser, refresh, and you will see counter component rendered with count zero. So this is from the initial component render. And now click the button and the count goes up. We see count colon one in the UI. And in the console, counter component rendered with count one. Click again, count is two, and we see the log statement rendered with count two. This is exactly what we needed. When we call set count, React updates the state value. React re-renders the component. Use state gives us the new value and our UI shows the updated count. The state persists between renders and updating it triggers new renders. Both problems we discussed previously are solved. Now, before we move on, there's one more interesting detail about use state. You can also pass a function as the initial value. Let me show you how. To use state, we pass an arrow function. I will log a message to the console to see when it is called. So initial state function called, and then return the same initial value of zero. If we save this and go back to the browser, refresh, we will see initial state function called in the console. If I clear this and update the count, you will see that the component re-renders but the state initialization function is not called again. Count two, count three, but we never see this lock statement. This is because React will call this function only on initial render and not on every re-render. This pattern is called lazy initialization and it's useful when you have expensive computation you need to do to calculate the initial state. For example, reading values from local storage, fetching data from an API, 
or doing any other heavy computation. So you can pass a value or a function to use state. All right, next, let's see use state with different types of data. Let's build a component that uses a Boolean and a string state. So in the source folder, create a new file, login card.jsx. And here, define and export a React component. Export const login card is equal to an arrow function. Since we are working with state, import use state from React. First, let's look at the Boolean state. We will define a state variable called is logged in and initialize it to false. So you state with an initial value of false and this returns an array with two values. We call the state variable is logged in and the function to set is logged in, set is logged in. Next, in the JSX, we will use the state variable to conditionally render a login button and a logout button. So return a button element and as text, we check the value of is logged in. And if it is true, we render the text logout. And if it is false, we render the text login. To make this button interactive, we will add an event handler that toggles the state. So on click is equal to handle login. And we define the function const handle login is equal to an arrow function where we call the set is logged in function passing in not is logged in. So if the value is true, we set it to false. And if the value is false, we set it to true. Now include this component in app.jsx, making sure to import it at the top and head to the browser. We see our login card component. The initial value of is logged in is false. So the login button is displayed. Click the login button and the login status changes to true and the logout button is displayed. This is how to use a Boolean value with useState. Next, let's look at the string state. We will define a state variable called message and initialize it to an empty string. So use state, empty string as the initial value. This returns an array with two values, which we are going to call message and set message. In the JSX, create an input box. So div element input, and we need to wrap our JSX with React fragment. So we return a single element. And for the input, we will specify type is equal to text, placeholder is equal to type a message, and we bind our state variable message to the value prop. So value is equal to message. And we add an on change handler that updates the message state. So on change is equal to a function called handle change. And we will define handle change. This is going to be equal to an arrow function. And this function automatically receives the change event object as an argument. We will use the target property of the event object to get the value of the input field. So event.target.value. And we will update the state using set message. So call set message, passing in the input value. So when we start typing, handle change gets called with the latest value, which re renders the component. And we can render that latest message value in a paragraph tag. Save this and go back to the browser, refresh, and we see our input element. Right now it's empty. Type a message, hello Vishwas, and the same is displayed in the paragraph below. This is how to use a string value with useState. Now it is important to note that state is local to a component instance on the screen. So in app.jsx, if you render the same counter component twice, each component will have completely isolated state. Changing one of the component state will not affect the other. And you can also use state with arrays and objects, but they have special rules about how to update them. We will cover that in detail very soon. But for now, let me summarize what we have learned. To add state to a component, import state from React and call it with an initial value. 
You can also pass a function to use state for lazy initialization. Use state returns an array with two items, the current value and the setter function. Use array destructuring to name them. Use the value in your JSX and call the setter function to update state and trigger a re-render. You can have multiple state variables, each managing its own data. And finally, multiple instances of a component each have their own local state. I hope you now understand how state works in React. Up next, we will look at some important rules about using hooks and dive deeper into how state updates actually work.